Good afternoon, my friends. Grim here. I hope all is well, and welcome to Perusing Premodder number five, where we play Green Black Nick Fit. It's gonna be a fun time, I guarantee it. It's a really cool archetype, of course, broadly similar with a lot of overlap to The Rock which is my favorite deck in Modern, why I started the channel, and also the first deck I played in my Perusing Pre-Modern series. But there's a really unique twist that Nick Fit brings to the table. So as always, we're going to do a deck tech followed by three matches. Shout out to our opponents today. We had Fjord on Dead Guy Ale. We had Dan on Blue White Control featuring Lance Standstill. And we had Bobby on Mono Blue Storm. Really appreciate you guys so, so much for participating here, for being a great part of the community, wonderful, skilled opponents. Big shout out as well to all Patreon supporters and all viewers of the channel. If you like this content, you want to see more, you can support me on Patreon. That is so much appreciated. You can also simply subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up, leave a comment below. With that said, let's dive into the deck tech and see what makes Nick fit, even in a strict green-black color pairing different from rock in pre-modern. All right, guys, so there's so many cards that overlap with this list relative to rock, we have to talk about what makes it different. Cabal Therapy obviously sees play in rock. It is one of the very best cards in the format, period. The synergy with Veteran Explorer is what really makes Nick Fit unique. When Vedex dies, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1, it's green, when Vedex dies, each player may search their library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Notice that it's not tapped, so you are able, of course, to go turn one Veteran Explorer or turn one Cabal Therapy, depending on the matchup and what your needs are. And then whichever one you lead on, on turn two, you can flashback, sacrificing Explorer, ramping yourself by two instantaneously, and casting Cabal Therapy for the second time, thereby guaranteeing yourself the most optimal hit. And on top of that, we've got all of the core rock cards just about that make rock one of the top meta decks. So the idea here is that we can leverage the card quality and the interactive power of green-black, which is proven, and then have an additional synergy and asymmetry sometimes with Veteran Explorer that enables us to go quicker toward that top end and indeed make the top end even more powerful than it is in Rock. Now, this is actually a legacy deck, and I'm not much of a legacy player, but it's been a legacy staple for a while based on that exact engine that I just explained. Maybe it's fallen off a little bit in recent years, but the point still stands. So why isn't Nick Fit taking over pre-modern with that powerful synergy combined with the very powerful spread of rock effects? Well, it seems to be, and I'm certainly still new to pre-modern, but it seems to be that most decks are actually not making this effect asymmetrical that much of a time based on their own structure. They're usually going to have two basics to get, even if you have multiple death triggers that happen throughout the course of a early to mid game, and they're usually going to be able to use the excess mana for something very powerful of their own. It's not like Legacy, where people's curves are a lot lower, maybe they're a lot less likely to have a huge reserve of basic lands to get. That said, it's still obviously a very powerful core of a very powerful deck. So just briefly going through the list, we've got beautiful portal basics. When you're fetching so many of them, you've got to make sure they're high quality. First time doing portal on the channel, John Avon Forest and Roma Swamps, you gotta love it. Lanoir wastes four of them for mana fixing, Treetop Village extremely OP in the format and can be animated and sacrificed for various synergies in the deck. Cabal Fit, Cabal Fit, yeah, Cabal Pit, let's try that again. Volaras Stronghold and Phyraxian Tower, all as good one of utility lands. Tower in particular, very important to the point where you could probably play two if you were more confident in the colors, even though it's legendary and even though it makes colorless, because having a sack outlet and having ramp at the same time, very, very nice. I should note here that this is kind of version 1.2 of the deck. I've obviously looked at lists, taken inspiration from some people and the technology that they've brought to bear. 
My first crack at the list had fewer discard spells. I've eventually gone all the way up to eight. So in addition to four Vedex and four Therapy, which are non-negotiable, we also have four copies of Duress. We're not playing traditional rock removal spells in the main deck besides a four of Pernicious Deed. So I'm relying more on ripping the hand up, which I think suits the deck better and also suits the curve better, because we're not playing anything like Birds of Paradise, even though I suppose you could, because they're a fair enough discard outlet, sack outlet, and ramp piece in general, but in this case, I'm not. Instead of birds, and instead of other things, we've got a couple very spicy cards to talk about here briefly. Abyssal Gatekeeper is not a card I've seen in any other list. It's a card I found with a keyword search when I was trying to kind of get my head around the concept of Nick Fit. It's a 1-1 one, one for 2. When it dies, each player sacrifices a creature. So of course, if they have an empty board and they kill Gatekeeper and you have another creature you gotta sack, that's the very bad downside of it, in addition to it just being a 1-1 one, one for 2. Uh, not very great at pressuring. But it is, in weird ways, you can engineer trades, you can engineer blocks, you can get that FedEx death trigger, and you can control the opponent's board in a lot of cases, so I think it plays really well with the deck in theory. In practice, I think it's going to have high variance based on the matchup. That's why it is only a two of. Very interesting card, though. Diabolic Intent, also a two of. Kind of the Abyssal Gatekeeper of non-creature spells. You can get two for one uh, pretty easily by casting this card, just like with Gatekeeper. In this case, you have to sack a creature as an additional cost, therefore walking into permission is pretty bad. Not as bad as it would be in a deck that didn't have so many death triggers and recursion effects, but still very bad. And the payoff, though, is totally insane. In an ideal world, you're sacking Vedex to ramp or for some other card for some other positive end. And... It is a very powerful tutor effect. Search your library for any card. Do not reveal it. Just put it into your hand and shuffle. Totally crazy. But the floor on these cards is low enough that I'm playing only two. Moving on to the middle of the deck list here, every single thing you see is a rock staple. Four Pernicious Deed, some of the most premier removal in the format. Four Yavimaya Elder, good old grindy card can be looped with various things and just value engine, pressure when you need it. Great, great card. Wall of Blossoms plus Cabal Therapy, totally OP synergy, and just keeps you alive against aggro decks and keeps you digging for answers in the mid game and helps you curve out. One of Sylvan Library, one of Recurring Nightmare. These cards, again, in Rock, do so much heavy lifting. I hope they'll do the same here for us. Speaking of familiar Rock tech, Genesis, Deranged Hermit, Kamal Fist of Croza, Phyrexian Plague Lord, Spirit Monger. Five of our eight top-end cards are seen enough in Rock. If you don't know what they do, go check out my previous Rock video, my previous Rock deck tech. They all kind of speak for themselves. But our top end here is more heavy hitting and more expansive and more diverse than you see in Rock due to the nature of the Vedex ramp of the Diabolic Intent tutoring more than anything else. The three that might not be as familiar to you, Body Snatcher, a 2-2 two, two for 4. This is another low floor card because you cannot even cast it successfully. You'll exile it uh, unless you discard a creature card. But when it dies... You exile Body Snatcher and return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Notably, it doesn't have to be the one you discarded. So there's kind of two broad use cases. Number one, in the late game, if you're grinding with an opponent, you have like a bad Vedex in hand that doesn't really do anything anymore. You can hold it in hand, pitch it to the Body Snatcher, engineer a trade or even just a chump block with Body Snatcher, and then buy back whatever your best card in the graveyard is. Alternatively, you can kind of do the opposite, where early game, when you're just trying to get bodies down and you've got like an uncastable 8 drop in hand, you can pitch it to the Body Snatcher, and then again, engineer a trade or just chump block with it or even sacrifice it to Phyrexian Tower or kill it with a Pernicious Deed or Abyssal Gatekeeper, anything like that, and then you can cheat that same uncastable card out of the graveyard, right onto the battlefield. So definitely an interesting one, but low floor, so it's a one of. We've got Visara the Dreadful, 5-5 five, five for 6, flying, tap, destroy target creature, can't be regenerated. This is more board control alongside Abyssal Gatekeeper to make up for the lack of removal. And Symbiotic Worm, clock, grindy value, all rolled into one. 7-7 seven, seven for 8, 
when it dies, create seven insect creature tokens, which, hey, those can be sacrificed for all the things we've just mentioned already. In the sideboard, it's probably like a ratio of two to one normal rock cards versus nitfix, Nick Fit specific technology. Innocent Blood, Diabolic Edict, Withered Wretch, Bone Shredder, Engineered Plague, two copies of Naturalize, Uktabi Orangutan, two copies of Ravenous Bailoth. These cards all see a ton of play in rock. Um, in rock, they're part of a wish board. Here, their ones will actively side in, but they're still tutor targets with diabolic intent. Beyond that, we've got some interesting little options here. Stromgald Cabal. I like this card. It's a black gray ogre with an activated ability of tack, tap, pay one life, counter target white spell. Been looking for an excuse to play this card. Now is the time, my friends. Scion of Darkness, this card is totally nuts in any kind of grindy, value-based mid-range mirror in this shell. It is a 6-6 six, six trampler for 8. Whenever it deals damage to a player, you may put target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, totally hosing the opponent, grinding them out while killing them. On top of all that, you can cycle it for 3, so it's not dead in hand early game. In fact, maybe you can cheat it out after having drawn off of the cycle. Definitely pretty cool. Wood Ripper is a 4-6 with fading, but you can remove fade counters to destroy artifacts, so it's kind of your Force of Vigor style effect or your Big Beater, depending on the context. And Multani Maro Sorcerer, this is kind of anti-control tech, I guess. You could play it in a grindy mid-range mirror. Maybe we have enough tech already, but it's a Star Star for 6 with Shroud. Power and toughness equal to the total number of cards in all players' hands, so if you can get it under permission whether by cheating it out or by just casting it after ripping their hand up. This card should be very tough, shy of a Wrath of God for a lot of control decks to beat. The final card in the sideboard, speaking of anti-control, I think control's a bad matchup for us if they have enough card advantage to keep up with our grinding power, right? Because they have uh, a lack of creatures that is pretty distinct, making a lot of our effects not that great, and a lot of our top-end threats you know, relatively textless, right? So I wanted a little bit of a nod to that. City of Solitude, I think, is the best bet rather than Defense Grid because our veteran explorer ramping both players makes Defense Grid less effective. So there you go, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Is Nick Fit just a worse rock? Is Nick Fit secretly OP because it's a legacy deck in pre-modern with a few modifications? Or is it just kind of an interesting twist, neither better nor worse than the mainstream rock midrange deck? Let's find out. Thank you very much for watching. Let's get into our games. Sup, my friends. We are keeping a decent seven. I think this would be quite an amazing seven in the blind but we know we are in a mid-range mirror slugfest against the Great Fjord, who goes T1 Dark Ritual, Knight of Stromgald. Pretty intense play. Into... Anything? Giving him first strike. Let's go. Love to see it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we still definitely duress here. It just got less likely to hit, but as long as we're hitting something, and <laughs> we sure are triple swords to plowshares. So at our leisure, we can Cabal Therapy for the other two plow, get a nice two for one. Um, and the only downside of our hand is kind of a little bit of a non-bow with Body Snatcher and no creature to discard to it. But that is okay. Just for the sake of mana efficiency, I'm going to go ahead and therapy now. Because next turn we might just hard cast a deed. I think now we definitely are because he's drawn Hypnotic Spectre. Um, and we just hope to fade the Black Land for it. He nails the Black Land off the top. Uh-oh. Now deed's going to be a sweet... Way to sweep up, obviously. But we're going to lose a little bit of action in order to do so. I think it's definitely correct to play Deed. And I think it's correct to play a basic land 
just in case we lose... Or he draws a wasteland off the top. We can still say land deed, right? He's not going to take two cards away, so I guess that didn't quite matter. But... All right, we lose our other deed. Rough stuff. Cabal therapy. Okay, don't hate it. Such a cool card, isn't it? All right, so that's a two for two, uh, because he got a card out of the hand with Hypno. Plus, of course, he did a lot of damage with those cards. So, um, Wall of Blossoms enables us, enables us rather to play Body Snatcher, but I think we're actually better off just playing the Wall. Body Snatcher is what for when you have like creatures in hand and in the graveyard. It's a piece of the grind. I kind of want to just cantrip here. This gives us a lot of lines, including like a blind therapy into a flashed back therapy. I was also hoping for gas off the top, which we do not get so lucky as to see. So a card that I'm a little, that I'm suspicious could be in his hand is like Exalted Angel. He could also have some kind of removal spell that he could use in a response, or maybe he doesn't want to use it all. I think we're supposed to therapy here. Just going to name Exalted Angel. It's a card he could have played for Morph, but would be potentially likely not to. Dark Ritual Swamp, okay. No need for any of that. So that play didn't really pay off, except insofar as it dug us one card deeper into the deck. Um, we probably would have been better off just going Body Snatcher, discard Wall of Blossoms, Pressure, and then if he removes it, we get the wall back. But Kamal Fist of Krosa, that's a top deck. All right, we'll take it. I'm just thinking playing this here and trying to race while he shields down is probably a little bit better than going body snatcher mode for the grind. But we do keep on passing up opportunities to actually use this card. I don't think I'm really checking for much here. on field probably needs to find like a vindicate or something it's a Gerard's verdict and if he didn't have removal before I don't suspect he'll have it now but we'll just go for it regardless and that's the concession okay so we definitely flooded a bit in the late game, did Fjord with Dark Ritual, lands off the top, discard off the top. Classic game one mid-range problem. We didn't have a great curve out either, to be honest, but we did have a big bomb top end, which he did not. Granted, I think we had the answer to his big bomb top ends because we could have therapied them out of the hand before he was able to play them. So, 
In a mid-range mirror, obviously, some amount of discard comes into question. I'm thinking everything else is looking pretty awesome here. There's really nothing I don't like, so it's really just the discard that might come out. Scion of Darkness is great. Um, I think Stromgald Cabal's interesting. I don't know how reactively we can afford to play with it, but it's like a... It's a body with utility, which makes it better than discard, arguably. I think Engineered Plague is going to kill enough things outright that we're supposed to play it. Um, I don't think we want... I don't know if we want Bone Shredder. Uh, killing an Exalted Angel is pretty sweet. It doesn't kill much else besides maybe Step Links, which could have Regenerate. Possibly a good card for the 60. Uh, Withered Wretch, again, just like bodies are okay. I like Innocent Blood and Wall of Blossoms for certain. Yeah, I think, like, we can get a Naturalize in there. <clears throat> Don't know his exact list, but we probably want at least one as an out. And that's eight cards. We could cut all eight discard effects. That's very aggressive. I doubt we're supposed to. Um... So let's just kind of trim back on some of the things we did that have a little bit lower ceiling, like Wither Direction, Bone Shredder. I'm going to get all my duresses out of here. I think it's just Cabal Therapy that we want. Maybe Diabolic Intent can go. In a resource trading matchup, we might not value the tutor as much, and we might not be able to accommodate the two-for-one as much. I think this is a totally fine way to play. I also think you could mix, like, a duress in for one Cabal Therapy, which I think I'm going to do. Just because, like, as good as therapy is, it, arguably the threats are what we want to take away from the hand more than the non-creature spells, and as good of an enabler as it is for our other things. <laughs> All right, I'll keep this one. It's kind of a funny end. It has more resources than it appears because of the treetop village being so high value in a matchup like this, an abyssal gatekeeper being symmetrical as things stand, and it would blank duress, which he didn't have, so that takes away one reason I kept it, but we'll still go for it. We do let ourselves get wastelanded here, but with our hand, I think it's fine. Spectral Lynx. Gatekeeper can beat that Lynx. The special tech, let's go. Don't plow me, bro. It's not even actually clear that it was definitely better to play Gatekeeper than Wall of Blossoms. I just basically got real excited about Gatekeeper. All right, Phyrexian Arena. That's one reason we definitely like those naturalizes. That is a big problem for us. Let's go Wall of Blossoms into another land. Yikes. I guess we're supposed to pressure here because he's got the arena. Try to give that as much of a downside as possible. Sure. Real 50-50 call, but Treetop Village kind of tilts me in favor of taking the aggressive role. That and the fact that we're not exactly gassed up in hand. Uh-oh. You hate to see Dark Ritual on turn four after four lands and drops have been made. You know it's going to be something horrifying. Vindicate a swamp into Knight of Stromgald. Fair enough. Pro green GG. Alrighty. So, Knight sitting back with a little first strike action. 
We've got Cabal Pit. Hmm. So do we race or do we play Yavamaya Elder? We risk losing the treetop village to like a vendetta if we animate an attack with it. I think we're trying to sit back, which is just terrible against the arena. But at least for one turn, we'll sit back until we can potentially crack the Elder. We can catch back up with the arena if we can get to a point where we're sticking Vasara and activating her repeatedly. Or we can just end the game after all the life loss with her pretty quick. That's pretty ambitious. It's quite a long ways away. Our gatekeeper getting plowed, that's awful. Awful, awful. Knight of Stromgald sitting back, though, is a little surprising. I don't know what to make of that. Except the fact that he feels as long as he doesn't get cheesed out with a quick counterattack or something from Treetop Village, he's going to win the game with Arena Attrition. Which you cannot really argue with. So... We're just going to crack the Elder main phase. Kind of a desperate move, but... Oh, God. <laughs> so we're going to discard a land here to hand size, which is no big deal. Scion of Darkness, a powerful one. This would have been a game where we're really rewarded for Veteran Explorer. Sadly, it was not to be. Exalted Angel, big yikes. I was just going to say, Pernicious Deed still cleans up so well. No longer the case. All right, we're deaf. We're almost certainly going to lose to the Exalted Angel, but let's at least begin with a Cabal Therapy, probably just still naming Exalted Angel. Trying to get another one out of there. Knight of Stromgald and Parish. Oh, boy. Fjord, you are without mercy. Okay. It's definitely a fine play to therapy away the parish. Maybe we can cycle into a duress Phyrexian Tower. What I'm trying to do here is churn through the deck, fill up the graveyard for threshold. Not go down on lands. <clears throat> Alright, I guess at this point we are supposed to take both cards away. That's what we've got. Pretty bad in the face of his board and unchecked arena. But we are, you know... Ugh, I was just going to say a turn away from Visara. Well, I guess we still are with Phyrexian Tower. Sacking Wall of Blossoms, but we kind of have to block here with Wall of Blossoms, I think. 
It's just looking so bad. We are in a no-win situation here for sure. Maybe Pernicious Deed needed to stay alive. We got nothing. All right, absolutely wrecked. Eh, we had Cabal Pit, actually, but we're just not getting there. Especially against the arena. Slightly hasty scoop, but I feel totally fine with it. A well-earned victory with a dead guy ale curve out on the back of Phyrexian Arena. Gassing him up. So, that naturalized one of his justified... Very possible to just play a second one because that card itself is arguably his best card overall against us. I think I'll, I think I'll go for it. <clears throat> I don't really want to cut discard spells uh, when we see things like perish in there, even though on the play we need them perhaps slightly less than we did on the draw. Stromgald Cabal is probably just too cute. Again, I don't mind it because, like, the body is broadly useful. And if you can navigate to a point where you're countering spells with it, that's obviously pretty good. But, yeah. Not gonna not gonna go for it. Um, this is a risky one-land keep. The only reason it's a consideration is because it has Veteran Explorer, but I think we're supposed to mull. Sad, but that's what we'll do. It's a pretty mana-hungry hand. All right. This one's <laughs> still got no black mana production. It's a four-lander. But Fjord Mulling as well, which makes me a lot happier about keeping it, which I will. Bottom one of our four beautiful John Avon Portal Forests. Land go and land go. Alright, we got an actualized sitting in hand, still no black. Gerard's Verdict. Yikes, dude. Big yikes. All right. I'm going to hang on to my gas. I'm going to pitch Innocent Blood, which we can't cast in Valras Stronghold, which doesn't really help us at the moment, but that's pretty bad. Okay, Engineered Plague. Again, can't cast it. But in a way, it's almost better to be able to hold on to it until he exposes the next one. Just no second verdict, please. Spectral links. Okay. Give me a black source off the top deck. Let's go. We're going to name Cat, or we're going to name Spirit. Either way, it's going to be dope. Veteran Explorer. Sure. This at least can get us there at some point. To that black source that we so desperately need. Um, so we don't want him to plow the Vedex, obviously. We also would love for him to just tap out for Phyrexian Arena here. Okay, I think he has the plow. I think he almost main phased it, then decided he didn't need to. Yep. Arena? No, another Lynx? Well, yes, another Lynx as long as we find a Black Land. One time, Black Land, one time. We did it. Woohoo! All right. Missing out on Black really paid dividends for us there, my friends.
I think it's slightly likelier that he has a random spirit in his list, but as far as I know, the dead guy lists that I've seen don't have any overlapping types shared between cards. They just have a fair amount of cards that are X1s and get hosed by plague pretty badly that are otherwise very hard for us to beat. Fjord says, hoping he was stuck on no, we were stuck on no black, and we were, until we weren't. All right, another land for Hermit would be pretty dope. We'll take it, Yavimaya Elder. All right, hoping for not another plow. But even if he has it, at least we're, ooh, okay, disenchant on Plague. It has done its job and then some, no big deal, unless he has a third Spectral Lynx, which I don't think would be expected. Cabal Pit. All right, so we play into the Parish pretty badly if we just tap out for Hermit. It also gives him a couple windows to do it with respect to paying the Echo and all that. So I think I'm doing it this way, but it is kind of the cowardly way to play. But we're going to go ahead and guarantee our value and play around getting blown out. All right, I live in fear of Exalted Angel. She might be one card away from, or one land drop away from finding. We find Genesis, huh? Seems good. So Genesis can attack into a no, it cannot attack into a 4-5 Exalted Angel, but with Cabal Pit it could finish her off where the Hermit and the Squirrels cannot. So for that reason, I'm actually going to play Genesis again. It's better against Parish as well. And I have a tension between deploying Cabal Pit, which kind of gives away that potential combat trick, And holding it, but then playing a Swamp. Or holding that to protect against Gerard's Verdict. I think I'm just going to get my better card down, but it's, uh, it is a real consideration. And I don't think I should make neither land drop, because we're playing six, seven, eight drops in this deck, so I'm not going to be too stingy with those. All right, no Exalted Angel. Nice. All right, now we're just going to get the Hermit down. Try to kill before the Angel comes, if anything, and obviously we're super overextended into Parish now, but we at least have the Genesis value, if that's what happens. Oh no, Dark Ritual into Hypno, then what? Then vindicating the hermit. Got it. All right, that's a lot less scary than I feared, I'm not going to lie. Abyssal Gatekeeper. I think we're going to hold that one in hand.
Or are we? You know, I actually think playing it in context of Parish and potentially other things, but in context of Parish actually makes some sense here. So we're just going dump the hand mode. It's a little more pressure, too, in case it gets close as far as presenting lethal. And it plays around that verdict. Another Hypno, got it. Or one shy of Threshold. Okay, so we can actually Cabal Therapy just to put it in the graveyard to achieve Threshold, which is kind of cool. Heartwarming Redemption. Just a nice little value play. He goes to one here. And therefore is dead even to a parish off the top. GG's well played, man. A little swingy, more swingy than, than they often will be, but um, both decks are really showing their metal in various ways at various stages. Well, my friends, we got them all the one lander, or do we? Because we do have Veteran Explorer <laughs> Cabal Therapy Wombo Combo. Huh. This is actually a pretty sweet hand in lots of ways. I think I'm going to just go nuts right out of the gates and keep it. But it's obviously a problem in many ways. Um... But let's just let's just give it a shot, right? So I'm gonna start with Cabal Therapy. Just blind naming swords to plowshares, I guess, because we are against um And we whiff, which I was just gonna say it's uh I feel a little bad just knowing the deck I'm against and being able to therefore turn one blind cabal therapy. But we whiff anyway, so no big deal. And the whole idea is that we'll get to Vedex flashback the therapy and then take it from there. So we've got Seal of Cleansing, Factor Fiction, Humility, Main Deck Humility. Jeez, that's pretty rough. I mean, lots of rough cards in this uh in the spread here. But we've clearly got to go for it, right? Feeling kind of priced into taking humility, but we're going to give him a turn two factor fiction if we don't. I don't think we beat his deck, though, if he lands a humility, especially game one, so. Okay, he's found just another land from what we saw, right? Basically, we hope he doesn't rip uh, plowshares off the top for this Yavamai Elder, and we can start going to town.
Hmm, just another land. Okay, well... <clears throat> And here comes the flood, so we can't really complain about flooding in the light of keeping a one-lander. But I am feeling fairly behind right now, because again, we gave him a turn two factor fiction. Uh, stand still in Wrath of God. We're obviously splitting those two, and then... Um, I think I'm less worried about the Wrath and the standstill by a huge margin, so I'm actually just going to put the standstill alone. Wouldn't be surprised to see him take it anyway. He does. Yep, because a standstill is worth those three lands, basically. Um, three random cards off the top better than Coastal Tower, Dust Bowl, and a Darker Wastes under these circumstances, I think, with another couple lands in his hand. And we don't have any pressure down, so we just have to play into the standstill. Which it's not like we've depleted his hand anyway, so... Could be worse, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely never ideal. He wisely just gets the seal of cleansing down first, that makes a lot of sense. Alright, Wastes, Decree, and two unknowns in his hand. And just another land for us, eh? Well, we've just got to go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Durang Sherman is the best play here. That way, if he's got another standstill, we can just feel good about paying the Echo. It's probably the most pressure overall. And it combos with Phyrexian Plague Lord, but that's not particularly exciting in this matchup. also kind of rewards us for splitting the piles as we did. He doesn't have the Wrath of God anymore, but I'm sure there are more in, in his deck. Um, we have a, a few tools post side that will improve our matchup here, but I'm feeling, feeling pretty scared about this matchup, to be honest. I think it's probably a bad one for us. But we shall see, my friends, as always. We shall see. Diabolic Intent is actually a, quite an interesting draw here. Not attacking with the Hermit because that's bad against Factory. And bad against Decree of Justice, potentially. Factory can block and eat a Squirrel, but we're, we didn't make all these Squirrels not to pressure with them, right? And I, I was unsure if he'd go for the factory activation because we could well have main deck removal that is relatively dead. Nice, okay. That this would turn on. Yeah, that plow pretty rough for sure. Let's go for it. Could definitely get countered here, and then we're in big, big trouble. Sure does. <clears throat> 
countered in style too, Mishra's Factory. Eating a squirrel in combat, the plowshare is making it so it doesn't have to tap. Then it gets to tap for mana leak. I was going to say, if he's got an impulse there, then we're really styled on. Thankfully, Dan has just a little bit of chill. A little bit of mercy. But not much. <laughs> As always, Dan rocking some nice portal basics. I, well, I was going to say some nice basics, but then I zoomed in and saw they were portal. Love to see it. We're on the same page with that. Another standstill, brah. Okay. This one's really getting away from us. But with Cabal Therapy, playing into it actually is a lot more attractive than it was a second ago. So the only question is, do we play Wall of Blossoms or Phyrexian Plague Lord to play into it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 with a land drop. So we can dump the whole hand. Probably supposed to start with wall. Sylvan Library, okay. We know we can name Decree of Justice. He might just cycle it in response if he has nothing really better to do. Perhaps a counter is more likely. But yeah, when we're kind of a grindy, somewhat depletion-oriented deck, and we're having to repeatedly play into standstills, obviously that's disastrous. And then when we've got our threats not necessarily lining up too well against his interaction... And our interaction not really lining up too well besides discard, which is fantastic. But you're talking about like the utility of the creatures. Yeah, I'm I'm calling this I'm calling this unfavored for our side, but um Like I said, we do have a couple things to help try to even the score a little bit in the sideboard. He's letting it resolve, okay. So we get the decree, there's also Impulse Wrath of God, Counterspell. <laughs> Flooded Strand, Plains, Plains. All right, so that's the updated hand. Flashback. Countered. Yep. Okay, so do we play into the Seal of Cleansing or do we play into the Wrath of God? Kind of bad either way. Let's attack with a squirrel, see how he chooses to block. We do have an interesting little trick with Plague Lord. I don't know if it's very good, but... since we know the Wrath is coming anyway. So he can tap to make us sack our other squirrel, or he can just use this mana for an impulse. Again, it's not a great play no matter how you slice it, but it's probably the best one we had.
the good thing for him is he's not now necessarily priced into using the Wrath as much as he was. He can even take a hit from the 4-4, perhaps, and call it okay. But we dealt with the utility land. We, again, played into the Wrath as little as possible, just on a value axis. I'm, I'm happy enough with that. Fascinating game. Yep, we're getting wrathed. <clears throat> okay, we need a heater off the top. Let's go. Pernicious Deed? I guess that qualifies, because we can then stick the Sylvan Library, potentially. Impulse in response, or do we have like an absorb a forbid? A forbid? I don't even know exactly what that card does. Did he buy it back? He discarded Flooded Strand in Plains. I think that was a buyback I just saw. Well, I need to look this card up. That was pretty brutal to have any counter spell there, especially a one that probably got bought back. <laughs> <laughs> but first, let's confirm that. Yes, forbid. Wow. Three mana. One gray, two blue to be exact. Instant. Buy back, discard two cards, and it's a counter spell. And then a main phase factor fiction. Big yikes, dude. Okay. Um, I mean, once again, I'll put standstill. Uh, it's not even good to put standstill on its own anymore. We'll do it like this. I, I think we just lost real hard to that. 1-2 punch. He's still got an impulse in hand, too. I'm going to take one draw step, and then I'm going to go to game two, because that was probably too much to recover from. I'm honestly happy with our deck's performance, though. Remember, we kept a one-lander, and all the things I mentioned about the nature of the matchup. And that's just my perspective. As you know, I'm no expert. I'm still under a month into the format, but... um. All things considered, yeah. Counterspell Decree of Justice Flooded Strand. Yeah, that's probably the right pick. All right. I don't know what we were even looking for with one draw step. But he's got Forbid, Impulse. Yeah, too much. So, uh, like I said, we do have a couple things in the side. This one jumps out because it's got Shroud and kind of punishes him for refilling the hand. Obviously loses to Counterspell and Wrath of God and similar effects, but hey. Seems good. Regardless. City of Solitude is nice. Uh, players can cast spells and activate abilities only during their own turns. I actually initially had a defense grid in here, and then when I like paid closer attention to my own deck, I realized that Vedex ramping makes defense grid a lot worse. So I think we want the harder hate of City of Solitude in this particular instance. Naturalizes seem good, but they're not as good as it would be if we were a deck that wanted to play, um, or could play, I guess, like the Seal of Cleansing to get it down under the standstill, right? But we still, I guess, want it. Stromgald Cabal, let's go. Pay one life, counter target white spell. That's that's a thing. We're going to cut the Abyssal Gatekeepers. Diabolic Intense kind of bad in some ways against a... Like, you two-for-one yourself if he's got permission, but I still think the card's actually pretty good here. I'm not sure whether we cut it. I think we cut, like, Body Snatcher... Stuff that really, really depends on stuff dying seems a lot worse than it would be in a lot of matchups here. Um, Spirit Monger is pretty average, I guess, against a plow deck, but we probably don't cut too much of the top end. 
Visara the Dreadful and Spiritmonger may be the least impactful, but she can at least fly over the tokens in the factories. Again, Plague Lord, pretty average. I guess we can keep the recurring nightmare in against, uh, you know, to buy back stuff after permission. Certainly keeping all the discard. We might not need all the pernicious deeds, actually. I'm going to trim one. We still want it as an out to various things, including getting under a standstill and sweeping up tokens and all that. But I think cutting one's pretty free. And then do we cut a single diabolic intent or a single top end card? Let's just cut an intent because we're probably tutoring a top end card a lot of the time anyway. Yeah, I think that's about right. One or two changes certainly possible, but... All right. We get to go Cabal Therapy into Sylvan Library. Seems fine. I'm not even sure that we should lead on therapy, though. Whoa, he's down to five. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm just not even going to... I'm just going to play Treetop Village. Well, on the play with a T2 Sylvan Library and the opponent mulling to five. That's probably about our best shot, but we did keep a hand without a threat. <laughs> so, you know, bear all that in mind, right? Maybe we should still therapy because he mulled. Ironically, it makes me want to therapy less in one way because it's less likely to hit even than it was just blind naming. But if we just name... Seal of Cleansing. Let me make sure I got the name right. The card we just saw. The White Enchantment Disenchant. We don't get it. Ooh, wow, okay. Well, that is all right. <clears throat> He's got a two-lander, but both lands are Mishra's factories. And then he draws Flooded Strand, which just made the hand a lot better. Um, I don't blame him for keeping it at all on a multi five, obviously. You can only go so low against a deck like ours, right? But yeah, Sylvan Library, a big bomb no matter how you slice it. We just got to fade that Seal of Cleansing. And he'll pass, so holding up Plow, but not Counterspell. Okay, so we can put... I guess both on top, like the life is pretty free, but we don't really need it. This turn, we're just going to... Well... Hold on. So if we go... We kind of need to keep the forest in hand. To sequence optimally. So we'll just go top, top. Playing for the long game here, just gonna name that factor fiction. He found an impulse, that's a good one. <clears throat> I think we therapy right away. I'm taking the impulse away, right? Kind of expected him to impulse in response, but you understand why not for a couple reasons. Number one, he could get really unlucky. Um, 
with what he finds off of Impulse, but number two, he also slightly thins out Soothsaying by shuffling before his draw step, right? So Counterspell, Plowshares in hand. I have no idea what this card does. It's a one-man enchantment. You can shuffle your library for five. And it's kind of a scrying effect. Wow. Jeez, this is, uh, I guess, a grindy sideboard card? Very cool. It's no Sylvan library, though. Okay, we can top both of these big uncastables. And I think we just... Uh, well, maybe we just go therapy again. It's just probably correct to do that now before we expose Yavamaya Elder. I like taking away swords for a few different reasons. One of them is that it kind of uh, makes it harder for him potentially to choose between lands. He, he obviously wants a second white general to be operational, but now we're pricing him into finding a second blue to make Counterspell do anything. <clears throat> Tormod's Crypt. I was going to say this. Another reason to therapy aggressively is before Graveyard Hate shows up. So he just puts them back in any order. There's no scrying to the bottom or anything like that. So the hand is still just counterspell. And we drew another Cabal Therapy. Which is obviously pretty great. The only unfortunate thing here is we're missing our land drops. Obviously, we cannot complain at all given the his mulligan and lack of functionality and the fact that we're drawing discards so much at the beginning of the game and all that good stuff. Um, but we'd be pulling, obviously, further ahead if we were finding a few, one or two less top-end bombs and one or two more lands off the top. But he shouldn't be able to exile the Elder, right? City of Solitude, that's a great one. Oh boy, that's a great one. Okay, so <clears throat> we're just too far away from that. Put on top. I'm going to pay four life to keep him in hand just as a card advantage thing. All right, it does not go for the block. Uh, 
Elder OP. We drew Duress, too. But obviously, City of Solitude is just totally nuts here. Let's hope he didn't draw a Mana Leak. So he could have Soothsayed in a response there. Not quite sure why he didn't. I guess he, I guess he knows the order from last turn. Maybe he wants what's on top and was protecting it from more discard. But this is totally crazy right now. Obviously, this is beating Counterspell badly, but yeah, he can only attack with Factory. He can't even block with it, right? For that matter, though, neither can we, so we do have to be a little bit careful about losing to the Factory beats. All right, one, two, three, four, five on the field. I think we're just going to make a deranged hermit in, in another treetop village and say that's pretty hard to beat. Um, or we could go duress into hermit, which is probably a little better. So let's go top, top. This is also more info for game three. Forbid and Counterspell. I'll just take the Counterspell. Well, we could therapy away the Forbid, but no need. I think the squirrels are better right now. Main phase soothsaying. <clears throat> interesting, interesting. Well, our enchantment's obviously showing up huge here. Wall of Blossoms, that's actually a pretty good one against Mishra's Factory. Surprisingly enough. All right, I mean, I'm somewhat tempted to therapy, but let's just leave lethal on board, I guess. We have it with Treetop Village as well, but... All right, a main phase impulse. That's probably GG, I guess he could find, like, between his draws and the impulse of planes and a plowshares, and then take care of the hermit and get another turn that way. All right, we took advantage of the mulligan for sure. We had a quite a strong draw as well. We'll take it. We may need similar levels of functionality imbalance to win game three. Uh, I don't think I saw much of anything that I wasn't already mindful of besides soothsaying, which was a very cool one. Um... When there's more parity, that card will break parity just by virtue of selection. Um, the shuffle ability is pretty cool, too. Yeah, I didn't see really many sideboard cards besides that. We have a slightly higher incentive for the fourth pernicious deed uh, based on Sooth saying, but I do still somewhat doubt that's what we want to do. It's just a matter of determining whether that's better than anything else we're doing. And don't get me wrong, I think the fourth deed could actually be better than a fair amount of things. Like, maybe it's better than the fourth Vedex. 
maybe it's better than a wall of blossoms, but walls have been surprisingly good here. Um, as just can tripping, even blocking man lands, therapy fuel, etc. If we can establish loops with a recurring nightmare, they could be involved, stuff like that. Um, do we just maybe cut... I, I think... I think on the draw, I'm going to play the fourth pernicious deed and cut, like, Symbiotic Worm. Is that worse? Probably just because it costs more than Visara, Plague Lord, Spirit Monger, these other kind of bad ones. Sure. Um, I still haven't seen any reason to play Withered Wretch. But it is just a 2-2 two -two for 2, and he probably uses the Graveyard to some degree. I wanted to kind of wait and see on this one. I mean, a 2-2's two -two got to be better than... For a 2 is good, with utility, has got to be better than something I'm doing. It feels unfair to cut a wall of blossoms, but that's what we'll do. Well, I'm happy I at least took this one to game three. Again, with the help of some bad variants from Dan's opening hands, but still, our, our deck looked pretty good in both both cases so far, honestly. Well, this hand, this hand plays. This hand definitely plays. We've even got the sack outlet for Vedex if we want to go totally nuts, which I'm not sure we do. <laughs> I think we're just going to go Duress Pass and take it from there. But next turn, who knows? This will reveal much, my friends. Okay, so he kept, uh, once again, mauled to six. Once again, mauled, this time to six, to be more clear. No white. So I'm definitely not taking Wrath of God. Hibernation's interesting. I think Counterspell is just the clear take here. We can clear the way against the plow if he draws a white land. If not, maybe we don't really care. He draws a white land. Okay, so we still know the whole hand. Cabal therapy as well. Okay. So now we don't need... Hmm. All right, I'm just... Like, th Explorer Therapy is fine, but yes, I know it's ending. Okay, yes, I know. We're against the clock. <laughs> um, I hate when that happens, don't you? Yeah, I think we're just getting that X down and saying go. And if he, want, if he feels priced into a hibernation, I think that's great for us. I doubt he will, but it is possible. He doesn't. That's fair. I guess we want a therapy before we decide what to do with diabolic intent. Just gonna take the wrath of God. Enlightened tutor, interesting. What the heck is that gonna get? Artifact or enchantment, probably. Uh, probably land still, right? Stand still, rather. It's kind of rough. Let's see if we can do anything about it. 
if we had a seal to get, that would be ideal, right? Of course we do not. Um, we just go get Sylvan Library and try to outgrind. I think that's probably the move. Or we could get, like, City of Solitude and plan to play into the standstill and just win because that's OP. But I think I'm supposed to get the, uh, I'm supposed to play something now under the standstill. Served us well last time, eh? Oh, geez, hibernation. Okay, I might have misplayed a little here. Um, hibernation is green permanence. I really thought it was creatures. That is my bad. I'm. Th I think it's mostly in there for creatures, but uh, yeah, that was actually. I kind of walked into that a little bit. That said, I don't think we had too many better lines. Um, unless, again, we're trying to get something to play after the standstill comes down. But I would have looked more closely had I read Hibernation more closely. So that's my bad, to be sure. Yeah, just a standstill. But he doesn't bounce Sylvan Library, which is fascinating. He can do it now based on what he draws, though, maybe. No? Okay. Guess he's just looking for a bigger payoff for that hibernation. Alright, Genesis and Kamal, huh? Huh. All right, so here's actually the line. Put on top, put on top. Play Genesis into the standstill, unfortunately. But then we can also sack it with Phyrexian Tower. And then we're hopefully between library and Genesis for Vet X out grinding. Most things besides another standstill. And also, if he finds graveyard hate, we will totally have owned ourselves. Big own goal moment if he finds graveyard hate. But, uh,. You know, Hibernation's a tempo play, it's not card advantage, so on the advantage access, we are keeping up. It's just a big turn here. Humility. Mmm, brutal. Hmm. 
Guess we just kind of therapy for counter spell. Coastal Tower, Wrath of God, okay. We now have to try to win with 1-1s, one or just dig toward Naturalize for Humility. And we don't even have any 1-1s one to start winning with, but we're seeing multiple cards per turn. With Sylvan Library, we are buying back Vedex every turn with Genesis for now if we want to. Which I think for now we do, even though it's just a dorky 1-1. One, one. It's just advantage. Okay. <clears throat> Gonna put Kamal back. Ugh, fact or fiction. Oh my goodness. Yikes, dude. Okay, in the face of this humility, that is horrifying. We can't win here. Exalted Angels, pretty unbeatable. Tormod's Crypt hoses our engine. Seal of Cleansing hoses our other engine. Plowshares answers everything in our whole deck and another fact or fiction. I honestly think I could scoop here quite easily. Um, but let's just play it like this. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. I'm trying to just run through my options. Um, misreading Hibernation didn't come into it. And I don't think tutoring something besides Sylvan Library would have helped us against Humility. Unless we just tutor like a naturalize, but then... Um, that would have been terrible if he just got another standstill. Right? So... I don't know. I think we're... Uh, like I said, I think we're kind of a dog in this matchup. All right. Hmm. <laughs> Do it like that, whatever. Make him at least burn through all the plows in his deck that way if we do find... Because uh, I'm assuming the impulse pile is a little better. Yeah, that way if we do find a... Naturalize for this humility, our big guys might actually be able to get there. Santa's Wrath of God on double impulse. Some pretty bad stuff. I'm just playing one one of anything for pressure. Might as well be something somewhat costly. Makes it that much a little more likely that it'll pull the trigger on a wrath, if nothing else, just for mana efficiency. 
But yeah, under the circumstances, chaining factor fictions, eh, I, don't, I don't see us getting there. We probably needed to find a naturalize like that turn, and then just go pedal to the metal and draw out the wrath and try to rebuild quickly enough. But he's going to probably find another standstill off of this, and that's just going to do it, I bet. Good games, but uh, yeah, feeling... Feeling a little exposed in this matchup. Like, I think a big reason why Nick Fit isn't as common as it you might think, because it's got a lot of powerful, like, legacy playable level cards as the core, is just because decks in this format can take advantage of Nick of Vedex's symmetry a lot more than you probably can in Legacy. That's my understanding. I'm no Legacy player, but... Couple Mishra's factories are kind of low key a problem for us too. No matter, like, even if we claw back into the game, they will be. We're behind on life. And they're broadly good in the matchup. And to be fair, even after all that, he does only have two cards in hand. But there's one of them standstill. Yep. That was the fear. That was the big fear. So now we still just need to find a naturalize. He's just going to draw three off of it if we do. <laughs> Cabal Therapy, Valrath Stronghold. We're beaten. Good games, well played. Stand still OP. Definitely you can see why it's one of the top decks in the format. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just happy we put up a pretty decent showing here. But um, some cool tech out of Dan for sure, including Soothsaying. That one was sweet. GG's. Alrighty, my friends, we are looking at a hand against Mono Blue Storm. That's a really weird one. Like, we've got... This just shows you how little some decks care about Nick Fit stuff. Because against a lot of decks, like grindy decks, creature-based decks, this hand would be really good. Uh, against Storm, it's really not. At the same time, like, it's got four spells and three lands. It's got some amount of loopability... It's got a discard spell, and as far as I know, unless we're going to get beat down by, like, the Cloud of Fairies or whatever that creature is that they play, um, our pain lands don't matter. So I think I'm keeping... And basically just leaning so hard into the Cabal Therapy, you wouldn't even believe it. T1 Slate of Hand... All right, I'm not sure what the optimal name is. There's a lot of four ofs like Merchant Scroll. Uh, I don't even know if that's a good example of a four of, but you can name Brain Freeze. You can name um, any number of the blue selection spells. You can name the Helm, the Cost Reducer. Honestly, would love to just draw duress. We don't. Okay, so we're definitely going to therapy. It's just a matter of for what. Oh, sorry, guys. I got a quick call I got to answer. I'm going to mute one sec. Sorry, we're back. Okay, so we can name a selection spell. Um, there's like Meditate. I think maybe I'm going to go for the Helm, though. I think it's called Helm of Awakening. We whiff. All right. Meditate was my other one I was just thinking of, but we have more time to hit that one, so I guess that's fine. Obviously, just hitting anything there would have been sweet. Definitely didn't have Lotus Petal on my radar to name, though. I know they play it, but I wouldn't think to name a zero drop. I understand, obviously, why I didn't play it, though. 
Okay. Gonna get that meditate out of there. We get two. Oh my god, so lucky. Makes up for the turn one whiff and then some. So lucky. We'll take it. Alright, brain freeze lotus petal. Two unknowns because one was drawn off accumulated knowledge, and one was drawn for turn. So, <clears throat> we can start trying to establish the recurring nightmare loop, but I think it's better overall to get Sylvan Library down and try to dig less slowly. For more interaction or the quickest clock this <laughs> slow deck can assemble. Him finding lands is probably not that bad for us, especially if he has at least one more in hand. He's not really restricted on mana in any meaningful way anyway. And now that I say that out loud, it makes me wonder how good the blind name of Helm of Awakening was, and I'm not sure it was good, but it is at least like a four of that's a very good play on turn two, so I think on T1 on the draw of the blind therapy, it's reasonable at least, but perhaps not optimal. Another thing we'll do if we're blind therapying in the future is just, like, for example, he's already used two sleight of hand and two meditate, so those are less ideal blind names. Merchant scroll for AK, play in the long game. I respect it. Hmm. I'm just keeping everything in hand, just gonna have a big a big turn of drawing everything that we can. This is all very slow, and of course, ramping him's not good when he's drawing cards off of AK. But this is what our deck does. It's kind of what we have to do. As far as I can tell, anyway. Even though we're quite light on Painless Green, we kind of need to get another Swamp here just to play Gatekeeper. And have an efficient turn. Assuming we don't draw anything better, which we don't. <laughs> it's a symbiotic worm, got it. Alright, our first attacker on the field. But really, we're potentially not even really attacking with it. We'll see. We'll see if we even get another turn. Oh no, the AK chain! Bobby just rebuilding like a champion from the... 1 for 2... Cabal Therapy, taking away his best card advantage card. Well, at least his most cards acquired. I don't know if you can call this card the best when you're skipping turns with it. Accumulated Knowledge might be the best. Uh, it's not impossible that there's some factor fictions at the top end or something. Of course, I don't know his list. This amount of tanking is to be expected when you've got presumably seven lands to work with, at least one Lotus Petal. We see six. Uh, we have eight cards in hand. He's got to have a seventh land. At least six lands. Call it seven. At least one Lotus Petal. And an over full grip. Eight cards total in hand. I'd be a little surprised if we weren't milled out by our next draw step
the fact that he is taking so long just makes me wonder if it's not particularly close to deterministic. He's got to plot the lines out a little bit more. I should also mention that Bobby has literally never played Storm in this format before. We did one warm-up game where he went off very stylishly, by the way, and that's it. So he's uh, he's obviously playing well from what we can see already. despite being brand new. Um, and even veteran Storm players will often tank for minutes on end over certain lines, so there's no uh, there's no real surprise here. I am... It is a little surprising not to see things start off with, like, a Helm of Awakening. Maybe he doesn't have one, maybe it's not the best practice to play one, but if he's going into Wishin, then the Helm is almost free. It already halfway pays for itself off your first spell, so I can just assume he doesn't have one. But this is also a not-quick intuition, so I wonder if this is just kind of destined to be another setup turn. Well, what do you think, guys? Do we take Frantic Search? Frantic Search, or... Frantic search. All right, getting rid of some flood. We got a nice mix of very beautiful basics over there. I love every island individually. Although, as you know, I always try to play fully matching ones in my own particular fashion. But we've got Onslaught. We've got Masters Edition 1, I think it is, online. The OG Mark Pool Island. And we've got, of course, the Mirage Island, which I have assigned to my stasis deck because it's just like you know what let's just catch this vibe let's just hang out for a while there's no need to untap <laughs> we're just on the beach nowhere to be no hurry and then of course a glorious portal basic i do have to say the islands are probably the least impressive to me of all the portal basics they're a very very good island don't get me wrong but like every other basic land type in Portal has at least one version that is totally off the charts. Good. You're looking at two of them right now. It's all just my opinion, but John Avon Forrest. He's the forest master, and this is arguably one of his best ones, and that's saying something. And then Romas has a great many nice swamps, including a couple from Portal that are just unbelievable. <clears throat> Merchant Scroll for Accumulated Knowledge, yep. Just another thing that's pretty hard potentially to grind through, but I'm, I mean, I'm not writing the turn off yet as far as him going off, especially if he has a bunch of Lotus Petals. But maybe this is just kind of another setup turn. It's still very scary. He's going to draw... Like, even if he just says go, he's going to draw four cards on the end step. Go into next turn with <laughs> 11 cards in hand. And all the mana he could ask for. We know there is a brain freeze in hand. Which... Target player mills three. So storm count of 15 kills us. Storm count of 14 puts us at a proverbial one life. Main phasing the AK. Okay. 
two pedals, but do we are we going off from here? Yeah, because he would only have played probably two of the pedals if not. Snapping back the gatekeeper. Big old brain freeze. Yeah, that's a good turn. Four in hand. All unknown. But we're not dead. <clears throat> and we've gotten a Genesis in the yard. There's now a Cabal Therapy as well. So I think it's probably unlikely we're supposed to play the Genesis game with all this gas in hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to have seven mana this turn. Um, we could bring back a Veteran Explorer, but I don't feel like counting the amount of basics left in my deck. I, I just think we're going to say no. But before we definitely say no, let's just... Yeah, I mean, we just hard cast Vassara the Dreadful. I mean, like, bringing back Kamal... Nah, let's just... We'll target whatever. But we'll say no. Got to be a little careful with our life total. Again, needing to take damage from Lano or Wastes for green here. Most likely, a Duress is a good draw. Duress, Vedex, Yavamaya, Elder. Definitely don't need the Elder. All right, so I think we have 12 basics in our deck. We have four on the field. We have none in hand. We have one, two, three, four in the bin. So there's still four to fetch. So Vedex is potentially feasible. So if we go land Veteran Explorer, Duress, Cabal Therapy, Spirit Monger, while keeping both these cards in hand and taking one damage off Lanoir Waste, we're down to three. I think that's acceptable. Just begin with Duress. Simple. Oh no, it doesn't pay off because it's only islands in hand. That's a that's a good thing though. That's a good thing though. Now you know what to therapy. L M A O. Are we supposed to? Wait, does Cabal Therapy is non land, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you almost had me, Bobby. Almost had me. Oh, and I also... Okay, sorry, never mind. Spirit Monger is still... This is just very complicated. I'm not even the one with the complicated lines, right? Yes, yes, yes. Weekly maintenance. Just stop telling me about it, dude. All right. Um, <clears throat> then do we therapy... Simply to ramp and have a more explosive turn next turn. I don't know. I'm not going to. Like, it's weird, but I think thinning out his deck and thinning out our deck is bad in two different ways. I know that thinning is not mathematically significant. But I don't know that we change the clock almost no matter what we do there, like with a more explosive turn this turn. It's not like we have haste threats or whatever. So... Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, once again, I just think we do nothing with Genesis.
I'm probably supposed to just therapy for brain freeze here using a wall of blossoms. Oh, we nailed it. Let's go. All right. Definitely some hype. Definitely some luck as well. But I think that's the right name under the circumstances. And that's still hopefully good enough. I guess Snap keeps him alive. But he's gone through all the card advantage, right? Um Meditate doesn't give him another turn, and he's gone through all four AK, so good game, well played, uh, Bobby. He definitely seems to have flooded like crazy off of the big AKs, which is where the game was lost from his perspective, right? Um, but we'll still take it. There's probably not a whole lot we're supposed to do here for sideboarding. I think City of Solitude's good enough to play but he can very happily go off main phase a lot of the time, but it's probably better than some other stuff we're trying to do. Uktabi Orangutan I like. We're pinging a Helm of Awakening and attacking with a 2-2. Let's go. Wood Ripper, same deal. It's a big threat, decently costed, can hit the artifacts. Um, we're hitting Lotus Petals with these things too. Naturalize, yeah, again, probably better than some things we're up to. Maybe even Ravenous Baloth as a 4-4 four, for four, 4 is considerable. Something we can consider. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to respect, like, Morphling or some other alternative win condition. So I don't think I will until I see one, most likely. I definitely want Withered Wretch as a 2-2 two, two for 2 for pressure and to compete over accumulated knowledge. And I think that's all we're potentially bringing in. So let's clean up the organization here and figure out what we don't like. We don't like Abyssal Gatekeeper. Um, I think we don't like Recurring Nightmare, Genesis. Uh, I mean, maybe Genesis, actually, just because it's a free hit off of getting milled a little bit. Still so slow, though. But, like, Phyrexian Plague Lord, Body Snatcher, I think these types of cards can probably go. Again, Body Snatcher, maybe not. But it's never going to die, so yeah, we'll cut Body Snatcher. We'll cut Symbiotic Worm from the top end just because it costs more than anything else. And I'm happy with this. We just got to find two cuts to make play probably with only, like, two Pernicious Deed. It could be fine in a decent spot, but it's, on average, probably not where we want to be. Everything else is pretty proactive, at least in the case of Wall, it replaces itself. Uh, I think this is a pretty good setup. But kind of like against Landstill, I think broadly we're on the right track. And then a couple, you can make the case for a couple things here or there at the edges. What you cannot make the case for, for is keeping this No Lander. This got a lot of good cards in it, but we are not going to risk it for the Biscuit. Try to rip the Lanoir waste off the top and live the absolute dream. I think we should maul. It's a great hand, though. Great, great hand. A few different ways to play it out. Lots of cards we want to see. If these two fatties were two lands, it would be borderline nut draw. But we can't keep it. Funny how we ended that last game at two life, despite the opponent's deck doing no damage to us. <laughs> Living on the edge. Dark Confidant is with us in spirit, if not in, in actual fact. Down we go. This hand sucks. Uh, just three slow threats. I'm definitely going to five. Okay. Keep. Um... Bottoming for sure, one Yavamaya Elder, and then also Diabolic Intent. This is not a good hand for that, nor is it a good card generally when one has mulliganed.
So our best draw is a black land. That way we can curve out. Wretch into Elder and hope it is enough. Ooh. Early Lotus Petal. Cracking it. Sapphire Medallion. Okay. I think I'm just going to name Accumulated Knowledge here. Seems like a likely card that he could have. One that we care about, especially in context of that start, seems likely. Double Brain Freeze, Cloud of Fairies, Lotus Petal. Okay. Kind of a weird hand. That's probably why he tanked for a while over whether to keep it. Once again, Cabal Therapy with the highest ceiling and such an amazing card in the deck, but in a few places you really wish it was a duress, which is why, even though my initial like version 1.0 of Nick Fit only had three of each, I, over time, moved up to four of each. It's just like what the deck, what the deck wants, what the deck needs. Um, and obviously, if, like we said with that No Lander, Having duress and therapy and some other low curve stuff, including vet X, is the dream. I'm very interested by the tanking here at the beginning of the turn. Okay, so no land drop. I don't know what else we can necessarily read into that, but we don't hit the land, but we do hit. Veteran Explorer, which is just such a good draw. He can't even can't even be mad about it. These elders are real slow, but they might just be might just be enough. We'll see. We'll see what he does, if anything, in response to therapy. He could dump some of the hand, at least. Cloud of Fairies has... Oh, no, it doesn't have Flash. It has Cycling. I knew it had something. I thought it had Flash for a hot second there. Well, wouldn't it be interesting if he just did, like, one Brain Freeze and then made me choose what to do with the therapy, but I think it's better. Yeah, and he does dump them both out. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, we cast two spells beforehand, so it's definitely a decent little mill. Alright, so Cloud of Fairies, Lotus Petal, one unknown. I'm just going to name Cloud. Lotus Petal Sapphire Medallion. All right. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to go... Yavamaya Elder, Therapy Away the Medallion. Sylvan Library, that's probably better than Yava My Elder for pressure here. I 
We still have a therapy in the back pocket in the graveyard, thanks to the brain freeze. We're down to 27 cards. I really assume his graveyard doesn't matter besides accumulated knowledge, but you never know. Okay, don't really need much from this. I mean, Pernicious Deed is just not even something we're that interested in playing at this point, so... I don't mind the Draw Treetop Village, though. It's definitely one of the better clocks available to our deck. And I'm just going to use this Elder most likely as a 2-1 beater. Another medallion, sure. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to keep everything in hand and now that we have like a cantrip, it's kind of a signal to go digging, and we're probably also so also supposed to therapy this turn, or we just draw duress, which is nuts. Let's go. That's a good one. That's a real good one, my friends. Lotus petal, lotus petal, snap. Okay, and then we're supposed to therapy away the petals. What a draw duress was, guys. Holy moly. And an island off the top. Unlucky, Bobby. Unlucky for sure. Another Cabal Therapy. Naturalize, Ravenous Bailoth, lots of decent stuff. Um, doesn't really matter what we do here, I don't think. So I'm just going to pay for it to keep in hand. Put that on top. Do a little bit of everything. We should have all bases covered here. And with islands off the top, you know it is. Very unlucky, Bobby. Um, I almost wish I recorded the warm-up game, because after a mall to five and me hitting him with two discard spells, he went off crazy, like T3 or T4. So he picked up the deck real quick. Um, but here we showed that Nick Fit, the disruption is huge with... Uh, even though our threats and the grindy nature of what we do against like mid-range decks wasn't that relevant here, we just kind of won with ham sandwiches after some really nutty synergy with Cabal Therapy in particular. And um, Sylvan Library, once again, showing up big. GG's. All right, guys, so those were our matches, and I think overall they went roughly how I might have predicted them. Were I to lay money on the results, I probably would have said that we beat Dead Guy, we beat Storm, and we lose to the blue-white control deck. Reasons for that I kind of covered in the deck tech. Briefly to review them here, I think Nick Fit is probably going to be at least 50-50, if not more so, uh, favored in most mid-range mirrors. Dead Guy is no exception, we just grind like nobody's business. And although Dead Guy can take advantage of Vedex's ramp with Mana Sinks, we have enough hard and soft, I guess, answers to those types of uh, threats that I would give us the edge there. And 
against Storm when we're just packing eight discard spells and, you know, a little bit of a toolbox worth of answers, but between the answers that matter, the ability to tutor them, and the discard spells doing the heavy lifting, we can turn ham sandwiches sideways and win. And even though the Nickfit creatures didn't have that much text in that matchup, that's basically what happened. And then against blue-white control, as I feared, the ability of blue-white to keep up in the grindy game while also not really playing in to the strategies that Nick Fit brings to the table that make it unique relative to something like Rock. I think that just is kind of a little bit of a bugbear for a deck like this, and so it proved. We we got a comprehensive win, at least in game two, but then again, he mulliganed to a mostly non-functional five, right? Granted, our curve out might have been good enough to keep up with even a strong progression, but in game one and game three, really wasn't feeling particularly like I was going to get there, even though our deck gave us a decent progression both times, as far as I recall. So, um, yeah, Nick Fit, definitely sweet. Hard to rate it exactly relative to its closest cousin, of course, The Rock. Um, I think The Rock is probably a little bit better overall, a little bit more consistent, but you can't call it strictly better. Nick Fit has synergies and ceilings of play patterns that The Rock simply cannot achieve. So definitely, if nothing else, a fun and viable way to put a twist on the normal rocking, and perhaps there's a lot more to discover. One thing I'll mention here is that I have been toying around with a white splash, which isn't really a splash, actually. It's more than that. It makes the entire deck a lot different, looking at effects like Academy Rector, the inclusion of Pandemonium and Sapperling Burst for a combo kill, and then of course leaning even heavier into the enchantments as far as the toolbox cards are concerned, because you can play that type of game with Academy Rector as well, Pattern of Rebirth, a big engine card. So it actually changes a whole lot about the deck, and that's something maybe I'll play in the future on the channel, maybe I'll just play for fun. Either way, thanks for tuning in as always, let me know what your thoughts are below. And I will see you, I hope, for the next Perusing Pre-Modern. Thank you once again to all patrons. And if you have not subscribed up to this channel, why not? Go ahead and do so. I appreciate everybody doing stuff like that. Talk to you next time, guys. Until then, take care.